Hello, hi, how are you? Um, okay, Mark Twain said about old age, it is sad to go to pieces like this, but tragically we all have to do it. Martin Amos said, meanwhile time goes about its immemorial work of making everyone look and feel like shit. Everybody apparently wants to live a long life, but nobody wants to get old. Some Italian even said, old age is the supreme evil, because old age deprives us of all our pleasures better than death, but not by much. When I was young, back before the earth hardened, and I was going through those difficult adolescent years, people were always saying to me, Enjoy yourself now, Mary, my darling, because this is the best time of your whole life. And I used to think, gentle German Jesus, if this is the best time of my whole life, I am just going to go and hang myself somewhere. But thanks be to God they were wrong, because this is the best time of my whole life. And I don't think it's because I've gotten so much better, and I can only hope I haven't gotten so much worse, but I believe what I have managed to get is a whole lot more like myself. And that, for me, has proven to be invaluable. And, and it's so relaxing, too, because, of course, I spend most of my time with myself, and, and now not with that irksome figment of my imagination that I dreamed up trying to make myself into what I thought other people might want me to be. In the end, other people weren't even thinking about me that much at all, which I now find comforting, but when I was younger, I thought it was tragic because I was one of those sad people who was constantly looking for the needle of myself in the, in the haystack of somebody else's eyes. And, and honest to God, that made me very unhappy, but things are very different now. Now that the future doesn't stretch out in front of me in that terrifying and ceaseless way, I find, no seriously, I find I am so much happier. Because instead of looking forward to an endless series of nerve-wracking possibilities, I'm now spending a lot of my time in the present dealing with realities. The realities of work done, of love loved, and of course, of suffering suffered. It does seem to me now that the secret of my life has been for me to just hang on until I was around long enough to get used to being alive. And then it all started to seem really good to me. Now, for a long time, I thought I was the only one who was feeling that way and that all the half-assed meditating I'd done, all the skimming through all those self-help books, all the Brené Brown tapes I'd listened to, all the Byron Katie questions I'd answered, all the Eckhart Tolle podcasts I'd managed to get through without falling into fits of uncontrollable giggling, I thought that all that had added up to the older me being a happier and a more contented me. But guess what? I discovered I'm not the only one. I'm not the only older, happier one out there. Science has now proven that pretty well everyone in the developed world gets happier as they get older. Isn't that amazing? That, that it is, isn't it? That, that in fact, life is not what they used to say it was, a long, slow decline into a sad and gloomy old age, leading inexorably to the dark valley of death. Because <laughs> when you scientifically measure our life's happiness and plot it out on a graph, it actually shows a U-bend towards happiness. Research shows that North Americans do actually get happier as they age. And that is despite health conditions and the other problems that arise. Now I know, let's face it, research related to happiness is subjective because after all, happiness itself is subjective. But 
Sociologists, economists, and statisticians have taken that into consideration. And the sociologists have alone have consistently conducted more than 50,000 interviews since 1972, just for the general social survey, whatever that is, but it's big. Uh, by asking the right question, are you happy, year after year over that long a period of time, and asking that question to people as they age and new people all the time, the survey discovered that people get happier as they get older. And these older, happier people, they weren't happy all their lives. I mean, they weren't necessarily gleefully jumping for joy through their 20s and their 30s and their 40s. But suddenly, at around age 50, they're thinking, they started to get a whole lot happier. As we get older, according to the research, happiness comes to us, even without us having to do very much to find it. Oh sure, we lose a lot of things that we treasure as we age, our vitality, our looks, sometimes our mental sharpness, but they say it's worth it because we gain what people spend their whole lives pursuing, happiness. <laughs> and despite what we've been told in the past, Aging is not all about mourning for your lost youth, but truly aging is a new stage of opportunity and strength. You know what they say, the afternoon, it knows what the morning never even suspected. Now, in our youth-obsessed culture, we're constantly being told that if we're not young, if we're not hot, if we're not glowing, then we're not worth anything. But that's not true. Science has now proven that old age does matter. It is the crown of our life, the last act of our own personal play. They say in youth we learn and in age we understand. And sure, youth is a gift of nature, but old age is a work of art. Now when we start out in adult life, we are on average pretty cheerful. This is the sad news. But things go downhill from youth to middle age until they reach that stage commonly known as the midlife crisis. The U-bend graph that we're talking about shows that we are at our unhappiest in our late 30s and through our 40s. The global average is 46. That's when most people will experience the most misery. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's not me, I didn't do the research. <laughs> Enjoyment and happiness dip in middle age. But remember, it is a U-bend. And as we age out of that dip, we get happier. And just a side note to the unhappy people in their 40s, remember, it's totally normal to feel the way you do. You, you are just experiencing an extended, unpleasant, but manageable downturn and you're not alone, and it's going to get better because this awful happiness drop will pass. There's nothing wrong with you. You're in the midst of a developmentally predictable stage, a stage, of course, that can be aggravated by isolation and self-defeating illusions, but like adolescence, it's a phase and it will inevitably lead to a happier phase. So, if you're not happy now, just live a few more years and you will get happy. They guarantee it. But in the meantime, remember, don't do anything stupid. Christ on a bike, if only someone had told me that, because I just went out and did every stupid thing I could think of. And if only I'd remembered that old adage, if I'd known I was going to live this long, I would have taken much better care of myself. Oh, of my feet, of my lungs, of my heart, let alone my liver. But all of you, all of you guys in the dip, get on it. It's never too early to start taking care of those feet. Oh. Now the world is getting older, and by 2030, the world population over 60 will double. This aging in the Western world is normally seen as a burden on the economy and a problem to be solved. But the U-Bend research argues that the grayer the world gets, the brighter it becomes. 
Confucius said that old age is a good and pleasant thing, when of course he said you are gently shouldered off the stage, but then you're given such a comfortable front stall as a spectator. Of course, when Confucius was around, people only lived until they were about 32. So it was quite a short stop for them in the spectator stall. No time for their arses to go completely numb from so much boring, relentless, useless sitting and spectating. It's different now, though. We're living longer, and we're going to be living longer still. Even the queen, who is certainly no slouch in the older, happier department, has had to hire on extra staff in order to send out those telegrams that she sends out to people who are celebrating their 100th birthday, because the number of people reaching the age of 100 has jumped by 70% in the last decade. And remember, the happiness that comes to us with aging doesn't just make us happier, it makes us healthier too, and more productive. On average, we Canadian women are living to the grand old age of 83, and that's 30 years more than our grandmothers lived. So here we are, with the gift of 30 extra years of happiness, healthiness, and productivity but with almost no maps or guidelines or even stories to tell us what to do with those happy, relatively healthy years. And surely our crowd, who spent our youth burning our bras and promoting free love and out to do nothing less than absolutely and totally changing the world, we're not going to settle for withering away quietly in some southern gated retirement community or, God forbid, tied to a chair in, in the hall at St. Patrick's Home for the Aged and Infirm, or even what's advertised now as our best alternative, tottering around in one of those steeped and stooped in toxic chemicals, horrible golf courses. As our horizons grow shorter, we need to invest in what is most important to us. And now we've been given the gift of extra time and the earned wisdom to come together, and we can march out and actually change the world. And we, with the tomb lurking just around the corner, sure, what have we got to lose? This very day is the youth of our future. We will never be as young as we are right now. As women, we get more radical as we age, because we lose power as we age. Men, on the other hand, get more conservative because they gain power the older they get. Yes, for men, it looks like the older and the balder and the jowlier and the doolappier they get, the richer and more powerful they become. For positive proof, just take a gander at those bags of old and rancid sin who make up the present-day Republican Senate. And the gender pay gap widens, too, as women age. And there are only 20 female CEOs on the list of the Fortune 500. Statisticians say that it will take 100 years for women to reach gender equality in corporate America. But you just look at our prime minister. He created gender equality in the Canadian cabinet in one day. He just went ahead and did it. And we can do it, too. We're the ones for the job. Let all of us wrinkled radicals start working together to finally bring about gender equality, to finally narrow that damn gender pay gap, to make the world a safe place for half the world to walk in. Yes, let's take back the night. Let's take back the morning and the midday, the afternoon and the evening, and set off on our new journey to explore the outer edges of human possibility, old age, is an excellent time for outrage. And let's face it, there is plenty out there to be outraged about. My crowd are the Boomers 3.0, and maybe this time we can finally build that shining city on the hill and construct our new Jerusalem of gender, racial, and economic justice and equality. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much, thank you.